All right, over to you, Luena and Shai. Okay, hello and welcome to the River Valley Ripple virtual information uh, session. Uh, my name is Luena Elotebi and I'm the Yes House program coordinator. Um, I live here in Granite Falls, Minnesota and have lived here for the past 10 years. I've been with the Department of Public Transformation for the last about two and a half years. Um, and so, yeah, um, I live in Granite Falls with my adorable dog that's pictured there and my now three cats. Um, and I'm excited to share more about this program. And with that, I will pass it over to Shai. Next slide, please, Hannah. Hello, I am Shai Miguel. I am the Program and Facilities Assistant at the Yes House. Um, I have been here only a few months, but it seems way longer than that. Um, I grew up in Granite Falls. Uh, I am living here again with my partner, Matthew, and our daughter, Nellie, and a whole bunch of family surrounding me. So it's really fun, um, and I'm glad to be here. Next slide, please. Thank you, Shai, for that intro. Um, and so I'll really quickly just go over um, our agenda for this session. So um, we will first go into a Department of Public Transformation overview that Hannah will go over here in a, in a minute. Um, and then we'll move into the Yes House overview. Um, and then after that, we'll go into uh, the River Valley Ripple Artist Residency Program overview and all the details with that. Um, as well as the call for artists and application process. Um, and then moving us into the FAQs or frequently asked questions. And then at the end of the session, we'll have time for a Q and A where you all can submit your questions um, during the session. Uh, with that, I'll pass it on to you, Hannah. Great, thanks Luena. And I introduced myself before the recording started, but I'll introduce myself again. I'm Hannah Holman. I am the Creative Operating Officer with Department of Public Transformation and I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. I'll go over a little bit about Department of Public Transformation. So Department of Public Transformation is an artist-led nonprofit organization that works to develop creative strategies for increased community connection, civic engagement, and equitable participation in rural places. We believe in the power of rural creativity in activating solutions to address community challenges and opportunities. We collaborate with artists, residents, and community champions on creative, people-centered projects, keeping our core values at the heart of all we do. Oops, went backwards. All right. These are our um, values essential to our work. So we believe play is an essential tool to build connections, break down barriers, make room for vulnerability, and inspire creativity. We work from deep compassion for the people and places we work with. We meet people where they are, strive for critical self-awareness, and work to be responsible stewards of the land and her stories. We view our work as a reciprocal exchange, not an extraction or dissemination of knowledge, skills, or resources. We work with and we work together. And we strive to intentionally provide and promote intergenerational opportunities for women, non-binary people, people of color, LGBTQ2IA+, New American, and Indigenous community members to work towards equal representation in artistic and civic leadership. Our work seeks to support rural communities by identifying and leveraging resources through artist-led, creative, cross-disciplinary, and cross-sector programs in Southwest Minnesota, statewide, across the state of Minnesota, regionally in the upper Midwest, and nationally across the country. We do this through projects like Ignite Rural, which is another one of our artist residency programs supporting rural arts and cultural workers to utilize creative approaches to work in and with their own communities in the upper Midwest. Activate Rural, another one of our programs, which is a five community cohort learning lab, as well as a public workshop series supporting artist-led activation of community assets across Minnesota. Beyond the Clock, an ongoing national network and digital learning exchange to uplift and connect rural cultural workers across the country. 
and the Yes House, which you'll hear about a little bit later some more, a creative community gathering space on Main Street in Granite Falls using an artist-led, ongoing, community-centered design-build process in Southwest Minnesota. Our four key and often intertwining strategies seek to connect rural municipalities and artists, activate rural community assets, support rural arts and cultural workers, and nurture the arts and cultural field. These four key strategies guide our programming and decision-making as we work toward our big, long 150-year vision, where rural communities across the country acknowledge, support, and integrate art and artists as vital contributors to economic, community, civic, and social life. And now with that brief introduction, I'll pass things over to Luena to talk about the Yes House and the River Valley Ripple Artist Residency Program. Over to you. Thank you, Hannah. Um, all right, so we can move on to the Yes House. So what is the Yes House? Um, so the Yes House is a uh, in-progress creative community gathering space located in downtown Granite Falls. Um, in progress, meaning that there are still um, some areas that are um, in inactive construction currently. Um, so it's not completely complete, but we are getting there very quickly. Um, to walk you through um, the layout of the space, um, the main floor area, there is a coffee bar, concession area, workspace, um, co-working space, um, gallery area, um, as well as a performance venue. Um, and then in the back area of the main floor space, there is a rock climbing wall. Um, and then moving into the basement of the building, there will be a classroom space, um, a small media lab, as well as a youth zone, um, a couple of uh, public restrooms, and a recording studio. Um, and the recording studio will be able to record um, some of our live performances that we have happening here at the Yes House. Um, and then moving on to our top floor, we have two fully furnished apartments. Our first apartment is a studio apartment. Um, and then um, in between the two apartments, we have a, a shared space with uh, laundry, utility sink, couple of twin Murphy beds for some extra seating when we have larger groups staying here. Um, that space can also be used as an artist studio space if needed. Um, and then the, the larger artist apartment has a full kitchen, um, dining room, as well as a shared bedroom living room space, um, bathroom, and a, uh, an office space or studio space as well in that room. Um, and so the, the development of the Yes House began with a one year community engagement period where the community um, shared ideas uh, with folks with an artist led um, community engagement process. Um, and then from there, um, of course, uh, COVID hit. So there was a, a long break in both construction as well as programming here at the Yes House. Um, and it was a couple of years after that that I came on board as the uh, program coordinator um, here at the Yes House. And I was tasked um, to begin, um, begin more um, consistent, ongoing programming and engagement with the community. Um, and so next slide, Hannah. Um, and so with that, I um, created the, um, what I call the creative collaboration team, which is uh, pictured here is our first creative collaboration team that was eight individuals uh, from the community, um, as well as one um, DOPT board member. Um, and so uh, with this group, um, we really, their role is to really work closely with myself um, and now um, my coworker Shai um, in um, developing the programming and coming up with cool new ideas of things to bring to the community here at the Yes House. Um, so we kind of started um, in early or the fall of 2022 um, of really think kind of, you know, sharing our big ideas of what we thought would be really cool to have here and really honing in on what they found most interesting to bring to the community. Um, and with that, uh, next slide, Hannah, 
we came up with um, what we call the Art of Neighboring event series. Um, and so that began um, in 2020, 2023, February of 2023 is when we first started our programming after we had our planning phase. Um, and we decided together with this new um, uh, CCT group that has some individuals from our previous uh, group and some new individuals in it currently that we would continue um, this idea of the art of neighboring, of really bringing people together to connect, share ideas um, in the space, especially coming out of some of that time of lockdown and separation um, in, in previous years uh, with COVID and all that. Um, and so some ideas were um, opportunities for people to have fun and connect with each other, explore different points of views and cultures, uh, share and learn new things, work, meet, and collaborate with um, local, regional, and national um, artists, so like visiting artists from different areas as well. Um, and the Yes House really strives to be an inclusive and creative space that feels welcoming for everyone. Uh, we envision that these events will strengthen our connection with our community and help us better understand how the Yes House can be a beneficial um, and creative space for everyone. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so to go over some of uh, the Yes House programming that we've done so far. Um, so we have um, kind of that's organically developed um, some DIY artist residencies um, where it can be both uh, more regional artists or um, urban artists or artists from um, elsewhere where they really have um, DIY artist residencies as part of this exchange um, where they come and stay here at the Yes House and um, do some sort of public performance or show and connect with the community in that way. Um, so that's that's been happening kind of organically um, throughout the couple of years. It's been really cool to see that grow. Um, we also um, support um, local community events that are already happening in our, in our area um, with um, staff support time as well as sponsorships. Some examples of these that we've been involved with so far um, is Squid Fest, um, which is a uh, local music and arts uh, festival, uh, Western Fest, which is our annual town celebration here in Granite Falls, um, as well as our Meander Opening Night celebration, which is the kickoff evening um, to our um, regional Meander art crawl that happens here every fall. Um, and so moving kind of into our Art of Neighboring event series that we've been hosting here um, at the Yes House, we have monthly Learn From Your Neighbor events where a, uh, a community member comes in to share something they're passionate about or a skill they have with folks. And uh, we're really excited to kick that off again here in November um, where we are doing a crochet, beginner's crochet class with Violet. Um, so kind of what that can be is a huge array of different things that's been really fun to see and highlight our, our local community members. Um, we have open mic nights, monthly open mic nights where we showcase um, regional talent so anybody can come and share anything that they want on stage and that's hosted by a, um, a local um, artist here. Um, we've had sustainable foraging workshops as part of our like environmental initiative. Um, looking at native um, plants and ways to sustainably forage them and what's edible and medicinal in our area and really educating people on that. Um, we've had uh, yoga classes and dance classes as part of our health and wellness um, initiative here. Um, some other um, performances, we've had uh, th theater performances, artist conversations, um, and then we uh, host our annual community ha uh, created haunted house where um, different community members um, form teams together to take on a section of the haunted house and we all create it together um, and, and share it with the community on Halloween night. Um, so that's been very successful and fun to be a part of. Um, next slide, please, Hannah. All right, so moving into what we're all here for today, uh, the River Valley Ripple Artist Residency is a Southwest Minnesota artist residency pro program focused on uplifting and supporting emerging and established rural artists with time, space, and resources to further develop and or expand their artistic practice. Um, and that photo there is um, our uh, 
RVR River Valley Ripple group from last year at their um, artist gathering. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so um, the Department of Public Transformation is seeking four Southwest Minnesota artists on this round to spend two weeks uh, for their residency at the Yes House here in Granite Falls, Minnesota. So uh, this is a self-directed residency program um, that's a great fit for individuals who are ready to step further into their identity as an artist and are looking for the time and space um, to balance their time, energy, and commitment to their artistic practice. So it really is a, a DIY type residency. Um, there is staff support that will be here uh, during your time at your residency, but it's really for you to have the time and space away from your everyday life um, to really focus in on your, your craft um, during those two weeks. Uh, next slide, please, Hannah. Uh, so selected artists will receive uh, two weeks of dedicated space and time here at the Yes House. Uh, to work on their practice, uh, skill development, or creative projects of their choice. Um, and that'll be at um, in the, the artist apartment here. Um, a $1,000 stipend um, in total for the entire two-week stay here at the Yes House. Um, and up to $250 for supplies and materials that you may need um, to do your work. Um, that is a reimbursement for those, uh, for the $250. Um, as well as a living space for the duration of the residency. And I'll go into the one bedroom apartment and the amenities here in a little bit in more detail. Uh, next slide, please. Um, artists will also receive a space for working on projects. So there is a small office or studio area in the apartment that you'll be staying at. Um, but we also have the, the shared space in between the two apartments that can be used um, if more space is needed, so we can work together on um, on uh, planning that if, if it's needed for you, um, as well as access to other areas in the S yes house if and when available. So, for example, the main floor area, we do have open hours and events that may be going on during your stay here, but um, we can work together if there are times that you might want to use this space for your work um, that we can uh, figure out ahead of time. Um, you will receive a welcome to town meal where we'll go out and um, grab a, a bite at a local establishment and a downtown walking tour, if you'd like, so where I can walk, we can walk around and show you, show you a little bit of Granite Falls, um, as well as introductions to other artists, community partners, and local residents if desired. So um, we can help you uh, connect with different artists if there's certain artists that you'd like to connect with. Um, we can kind of help you and do introductions in that way. Um, staff support in promoting and hosting the one uh, public artist salon that you'll um, will plan together, which is a public event um, during your two week residency. Um, and of course, um, we will be on site during your residency, during open hours and different things like that, so that there will be um, staff support and connection during during your time here. Um, next slide, please. All right, so now we'll go into a little bit more details of uh, the lodging and workspace area here. Um, so your the private one bedroom fully furnished apartment has a full bath, um, full kitchen, small office studio space, linens, so sheets, bedding, towels, washcloths will all be um, supplied, um, cookware, dishware, appliances, and coffee pot are all included. There's a microwave, um, tea kettle. Um, so there's, it should all be um, fully, fully furnished and ready for use. Um, a shared working space uh, with a, a utility sink, um, two extra Murphy beds, oh, here it mentions the microwave and then the washer and dryer that's available for use as well. Um, and then on the main floor of the S house um, is available for the artist salon. And as I said earlier, if, if it's needed for a workspace upon request or when available, so we can work together um, if that's needed in your, in your process. Um, and then of course, staff support, um, Shai and I will be on site um, and available to answer any questions about lodging or workspace or anything else that you have questions about during your residency. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, so um, a little bit about more about the um, public event. So the artist salon, some examples um, could be an artist meet and greet, um, an exhibition or showcase of your work, uh, a presentation um, of your work or of the, of the residency or whatever else um, you may want to present on, um, a workshop, um, a works in progress performance or presentation or exhibit, um, a public reading, um, an artist talk, Q&A, a film screening, um, or other. So, you know, it's definitely something we can discuss if it's not on this list. Um, last year, um, we had um, we had an uh, art exhibit gallery. We had an artist do an open mic style event. Um, we had an uh, artist uh, talk and presentation um, showcasing their work. So we really had a, a, a large array of different ways that the artists wanted to present to the public. And we really strive to work with you and to um, to kind of you know build on whatever you wanna do and, and how we can make that happen in the space. Um, next slide, please. All right, so moving on to um, eligible artists. So eligible artists will reside within the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota, um, and they're all listed there. Um, I won't go through every single county. Um, and um, artists must be over the age of 18 years old. Um, and artists um, should be interested in sharing their work and their creative process with the public as um, you will need to host that one public um, artist salon where you'll be showcasing or sharing um, your work. Um, next slide, please. All right, so some of the selection criteria. So the River Valley Ripple Selection Committee will include representatives from the creative collaboration team that I talked about a little bit earlier in the presentation and the Department of Public Transformation staff. Uh, they'll be reviewing the applications based on the following criteria. Um, so the first one is artistic growth. So the applicant articulates a personal or artistic goal and our potential for their artistic growth through participation in the RVR artist, artist residency program. So you don't necessarily have to have a certain project um, detailed in mind um, for the residency, but just um, showing that the, the room for that growth during the, the residency. Um, the readiness, the applicant shows how and why this residency is a good fit for their artistic growth at this time in their life, career work. So why is this a good fit for you right now um, to take these two weeks and to really hone in on your craft? Um, capacity, uh, the applicant demonstrates the availability and commitment to fully participate in the residency program. So are you fully available um, for those two weeks to really participate and, and host this, um, host the um, artist salon and be present for, um, for the full term of the residency. Um, and then applicant diversity. So the selection process will prioritize diversity of geographic locations across the region, artistic mediums and range of experience. So beginner, beginner emerging or established artists and priority will be given to native BIPOC, black indigenous people of color and LGBTQIA plus artists and culture bearers. Next slide, please. All right, so here's a little bit of the timeline we're looking at for this residency. Um, so on October 4th, the call for artists um, and the application form opened up. Um, and then today, October 16th, we're hosting uh, this virtual information session. Um, and on November 10th, um, applications for the River Valley Ripple Artist Residency will be due uh, by 11.59 p.m., so right before midnight on November 10th. Make sure you get your applications in on time. Um, and then uh, mid to late November, um, we'll be going over um, applications with the artist selection process um, and applica applicant notifications. Um, and then in December, uh, we'll be announcing the selected River Valley Ripple artists for this season. Um, and then once they're selected, um, between February uh, 2025, oops, sorry, it should have been 2025, and May 2025, um, the residencies will take place. So we'll be um, for the, the four resident, the four residencies 
and a two week time frames will be taking place during those months. Um, and then May, May and June will be the artist feedback time and wrap up as well as hosting the River Valley Ripple Artist Gathering um, will be sometime in May or June. Next slide, please. So how to apply. Um, so to apply, uh, you'll just need to complete the simple online application. And to access this application, you'll need to visit www.publictransformation.org slash RVR and click the apply here button. Um, and I believe we will we'll go into kind of what that looks like here in a sec. Um, if you prefer, you are welcome to submit a video application instead of filling out the application form. And there are instructions of that on the website. Um, if you have further questions though, feel free to email me. I will have my email here up on one of our later slides. If there's any questions, you can definitely reach out. And just a reminder of the application due date, November 10th by 1159 p.m and late applications will not be reviewed. Um, Hannah, at this time, do we wanna go through the, a little bit of the, where it's on at the website? So here is um, on our website, what it looks like, that page. Um, so you'd scroll down. There's a great video here too, um, and call for artists. So the video here is kind of a little, to hear a little bit about last year's um, residencies from the artists from last year. Um, and then there is the click here to apply button. So you click that and this is the form that'll pop up. Um, it's a really um, pretty simple form to fill out. We'll just kind of scroll through the whole thing. I won't go through every single question here, um, but like I said, I'm available you know, via email. If there's any questions or assistance you need in filling this out, we're happy to help. And then we'll keep scrolling down to kind of show you where the submit button is down here. So you write your answers in the boxes there. And there is the submit form button. So that's what you click when you are fully complete finishing the form and want to submit it. Thank you, Hannah, for going through that. We'll just pop up our slideshow again. There we go. All right, so FAQs, uh, frequently asked questions. So if you are wondering about something or do have a question, uh, make sure to check out our frequently asked questions. It is on that same page on the website. Um, if you scroll down, um, and they have some of the common questions there that you can uh, click on and check out and read the answers. And then of course, if you um, want to discuss it further or have more questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. All right, next slide. All right, and then I'd like to do, um, to uh, give a huge thank you to our funders. Uh, this River Valley Ripple Artist Residency is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, thanks to a legislative appropri appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Next slide, please. All right, and that completes our info session. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We will um, leave some time. To, if there's any uh, questions um, that you all have, please use the Q&A function, function in the Zoom webinar to ask questions. So we'll give some time for that. I have just a couple of questions here um, from Q&A. Uh, can you talk about, can I sell my art during my residency? Uh, yes, you can definitely uh, sell your art and keep 100% of the proceeds. Um, we actually encourage you to share share your art and, and sell it here if, if applicable um, to, to really grow your audience as part of the residency. Um, so yes, we'd, we definitely encourage that. Awesome. And then how do you use uh, the supplies and materials budget? Yes, so the $250 uh, supplies and material budget can be used for any supplies you think you may need during your residency to work on your craft. Um, what that can be can be broad. So if you do have questions on what that might be, you can ask if there is specifics. 
I mean, it is a reimbursement type um, of payment. So you would uh, submit receipts and we'd reimburse you. I mean, that can be done a little bit like a couple of weeks before your residency if you do want to have your supplies before your residency so that you have them during your residency. Um, just make sure to communicate that uh, with me um, and then we can get that done before your residency. Um, Hannah, let me know if I missed anything on uh, that materials budget aspect of the question. All right. Sounds good. That Any is other questions? For questions? All right. Well, I just want to point out here, we have both my email as well as Shai's email. Um, feel free to email us any questions you may have about the application process or the residency. Um, and we're happy to answer anything, um, any questions you may have. And with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, thanks so much. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs>